Yes, I'm loud. Good. Hello. Hi. Yes, I am. How are you doing? How are you doing? Not bad. At the back. How are you doing? Yeah. At the front. Yeah. Left. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I love the idea that you can figure out where, broadly speaking, people are from from the way they cheer. Uh, I I came out the Tower Hill station uh, this morning and yesterday, and uh, it reminded me the last time I was at Tower Hill was to go to the Tower of London with Paul Irish, and we went on the tour. Who, by the way, is not Irish? Who is not? It's shocking. <laughs> and. We were there, and the yeoman went, uh, are you ready for the tour? And everybody went, whee, in that British style, apart from Paul Irish. It went, woo! <laughs> now, I enjoyed it because the yeoman just went, there's an American in the crowd. <laughs> and I was like, OK, but I think he's allowed. I think he paid. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, that's not what we're here for. Um, so, Sermon and I, we run a show called Supercharged on YouTube.com slash Chrome Developers. Well done. Well said. Hashtag branding. And um, what we normally do is we normally spend some time live coding on a live stream uh, some UI elements. And we thought we'd do it live, live for you today. Um, that kind of idea of doing <coughs> live coding. If you've ever watched the show before, uh, we usually have the YouTube live chat. And I read it, and I, I distract him with a question to come it up. It really does. Today, we're going to use the Polymer Slack channel. So for you people in the room, the people watching the stream at home or at work, wherever, uh, come into the Supercharged channel and ask your questions throughout the live stream here. I'm going to be watching the chat and reading it, provided I can keep up. Yeah. Um, um, and I'm going to try to weave in all the questions that you have and get, and we'll try to answer them if we know. Yeah. So the idea is I'm going to build a UI element. And normally, they're quite practical, like side navs and stuff that you, no, not today. It's going to be overblown and ridiculous, um, or as ridiculous as I can bring myself to make it. We call it showbiz. We do. Showbiz, right. You can see what's on my screen. So I may as well get started <laughs> with code. Yay. Um, I'm because we get that question all the time, oh, this is VS Code. Yeah, HTML. There we go. Oh, snippets are your friend. And here's a fast typer. Uh, I am a bad typer. Paul Lim, uh, submit. Give it a title. Right. If anybody wants to do like count how many typos he does, oh, I would be curious to see that. Do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right. Rel equals import. Oh, async. Because it is the Polymer format. I thought I'd do web components. I'm not going to do Polymer. I'm just going to go, I'm going to use the platform. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go straight in and see what I've happens. I've never heard that before today. I know. Weird, isn't it? Use the platform. Hashtag branding. Damn. Uh, OK, href <laughs> equals. Now, I'm going to make a, here's what I thought. Let's make something where, like imagine a disk. And it's got like a value on the front, like one, two, three, four, whatever. And you click it, and it flips over in 3D. <laughs> Why not? And on the back, you can choose like one, two, three, four, and then it flips back over and show you what, what the current value is. Sounds ridiculous enough? Good. Let's do it. it it's like a tab. So I'm going to call it but in 3D. I'm going to call it flip switch. HTML. So right. before in the show, we have used custom elements. Oh, yeah. But only V0. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be new to this. I actually like, I plugged my ears. I didn't watch any of the talks. So I didn't know how, how V1 works. I don't know how anything works. So I, I will be educated by this. And I will probably ask questions that even new, you know the answers to. Um, cool. Right. So flip switch.js. How's everybody doing in the chat? We're actually, suddenly we have a surge of people coming in, which is great. Awesome. Right, so what I've got is I've got, uh, let me see, let me see if I can explain what I'm actually doing. Um, I'm going so to. My first question would be you're in a separate file already, which is yeah. just like no, no doc type, no. I know, right, because it's an HTML import. So I've got an HTML import, with, which I've called async, because I'm being good about that. And I've got my custom element. So my, my theory was I'll use all the web component primitives that make sense here. So I've got uh, an HTML import, which I'm going to use. Basically, I'm going to have a template which I figure is going to be stamped into the shadow DOM of the thing that I'm making. And then I have the, the JavaScript itself. So let's make that. Why not? Flip switch. Dot JS. And friends don't let friends write out custom elements by hand. They have snippets. Oh, yeah. Uh, because I, if I was left alone to write things like uh, the constructor, I would forget to call super. And that would break everything. I don't know why it breaks everything. But if you don't, the browsers all go, Aah. but if you put in super, it's like, sure, yeah. That's fine. It's an HTML element now. So for me, this is already new, because yeah. previously you had an the constructor would never be called, but instead you would have the created callback. Correct. And now in V2, in V1, we apparently moved to the actual constructor, which I like. I like how you bumped it to V2 there, dude. Uh, yes. Oh, whoa, whoa. Don't do that, VS Code. Come back. Right. Well, let's do, because by the way, this is grumpy at me. See, class, it doesn't like it. It's like ESLint's like, no. So let's make it OK with it. ESLint env. ES6. 
Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, it didn't know you were using it. It didn't know. It didn't oh, know. It's fine. That's right, let's make sure this is actually working. Console.log. Flip switch. Ooh, there's my server. Come on. Yes. That's a start. So we actually have. It's what did we just do? <laughs> it's figured out that. Um, See, now every time I switch, it's going to be right. There we go. Um, it's figured out that I actually have a flip switch in my page, and it's called the constructor, and now it's spat out flip switch. We're going to have to well go done. faster than this if we actually want to make some progress, so uh, I should get on with it. Um, right, so let me make sure that this is actually going to work. Let's do some styles in here. And I'm going to tell the host that I want it to be background red display block width 200 pixels. Height, don't be marking my typing because it's awful. Uh, with height 200%, 200%, 200 pixels. That seems good. Units are hard. I know. They are for me. All right. OK, so now here's the thing. What we're going to do is we're going to try and stamp it into the Shadow DOM. So I need to know, because it's in an import, I have to know which import it is. So doc equals, that's the main document, uh, current script. Yeah, it'll be current script. Who's running? Which is this. And then I say, who's the owner of that doc? There we go. I own a document for that. And he goes, yeah, it's this one. So now I can say. Wait, so document and owner document can be different? Yeah, document is the main document. And the owner document is the, the owner of the current script, which is the oh. script. Yeah. So I can now say doc.query doc selector, like so. And I can ask for my fs temple, which is going to need the hash on the front because it's an ID. And then I can do, oh, yeah, uh, this dot attach shadow. Sounds so good every time I say it. Mode open, open. I'm going to let it, leave it be open. So what, what is it? In yeah, that's what it means. Basically, I think it's, are you allowed to access the shadow root from outside or not? If I'm wrong, somebody's going to correct us, probably on the chat. But I'm yeah, pretty sure well, if I'm it's closed, it. it means that you can't. Uh, so only people who actually have the reference returned by this can use the shadow root if it's not open. Sounds about right. OK, that so would make sense. There, and we're going to append child. We'll say temple dot or content, because you have to do that on the template. Dot clone nude deep is true. Who yeah, look at that. Do you see that? It was like oh, I, VS Code was like deep? And I'm like, yes, do that. Right. Yes, I've got a red block. It's gotta get more showbiz than this. And we're done. <laughs> yeah, and we're done. See you later. Um, right, in the main page, I'm gonna let's do some myth busting. Ready? Style. Ooh. You know that typo. Shut up. Uh, all right, HTML body, body. Ooh, width 100%. I'm just going to basically make this thing take up 100%. Why not? And let's see, width height 100%. Let's see, margin zero, padding zero. Yeah. And here's the thing: when somebody tells you that you you can't vertically align in CSS, they're lying to you. Because with two lines, display flex, flex, and align. Items center. Center. Even I knew that. Bink. There we go. Vertically aligned. Ta da! And also, justify. Justify. Just. Oh. See? I told you. And now it's actually in the middle. It's in the middle. Everything. I love it. It's so good. Flexbox is so good. Whee! I remember back then when you had to do like a zero pixel, zero by zero pixel object and then do relative 50% and whatnot. Shout out to Spacer Gifts. Spacer Gifts. Those are good times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm glad we had this chat. It's feeling quite emotional. Right. Uh, so that's in the middle. And what I'll do is I will now start adding some stuff. Now, if it's going to do that thing where it's actually going to flip forward, it's something which has got a front and a back. So I'm going to make a container for those because I've got a feeling I'm going to need one. Because I'm going to need one. Because I'm going to put things like perspective on. So div class equals front. And we'll say front. So does what it says on the tin. And we'll need one for the back as well. Back. 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 How's the chat doing? So I'm assuming this is like the front card, a uh, front side and the back side eventually of the thing that yeah. you mentioned will be flipping. That's over. the one. That's the All right. one. So we'll say we've done something similar before with a 3D card flip. Yep. Where we, I guess, talked more about the shadow than the actual card flip in the That's end. That's correct. Because we had to do it efficiently to get the 60 FPS. Indeed. But we had the same setup. So we had like a front and a back, and um, basically one thing was becoming visible and the other one becoming invisible oh, when things are flipping over. Front so if you don't know that, watch that episode. They're all on YouTube, on demand. Maybe good to fall asleep with or something. Yeah, it's the sound of our voices. <laughs> Probably not. No. Um, right, so I've positioned them absolutely and told them to be with 100%, high 100%, top left zero, and they've decided to break out of the containing element because their parent, which is container, 
is statically positioned. So we'll have to say position, we'll do relative. And that'll bring them back in. It looks and, pretty. Yeah, I know, it looks like amazing. Give me time, give it time. I've, I've got a lot of faith in where we're going. Right, there's still not 100%. Wow, you need to be with 100%, that's why. So the container needs to be 100% of the thing. There you see, now there we are in the middle, but they look ridiculous. So let's fix that. And what we'll do is we'll set background. Ooh, 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 here's an idea. Let's do color. Ah, yay. Uh, Custom properties. One, a three, two, this will be a greeny color. Of course you know that. <laughs> oh, by the way, just, just because that before anybody calls us up. <laughs> so, yeah, come on, A3 is more than two, six, and one. I've, all well, right, well fine, done. fine, well fine. By the way, just, just to, I, I, I don't know what we're doing today, but Paul, to be fair, we wanted to say that he did rehearse this because we are strictly time boxed this time and don't have the stream where we can go on as long as we want to. And, yeah, right. you know, um, so this has been rehearsed by him, not by me. So I'm, thanks for, I don't know. Thanks for telling them that I didn't just figure out that that was green by myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, right, we don't need the red anymore because we know that this is working, okay. So we've got the front and the back, and the back is sitting on top of the front, which isn't kind of really what we want. We actually want a front and a back face, right? So we want to rotate the back face by 180 degrees. So let's... Wait, what? The back, like front side and... We've got a front, look, we've got a front and a back, yeah. right? So the front is facing us, but the back is also facing us, which is ridiculous. True. That's not real life. So you want the to... back has to face away from yeah, you, right? Yeah, true. Okay, cool. So we're going to do a transform, and we're going to do rotate Y 180 degrees, like so. And now the back is it, is, it is back, but because the way 3D transforms work, they show you the back face of the thing by default. It's back face visible. Um, you mean back, back face, face visibility. visibility visible. So both of these will show your them. CSS right. Sorry, back, back face visi visibility. I can't type today. And hidden. Okay, and that will make, the back is still there, but it's now actually hidden away. Which if is you've good. ever done any OpenGL or WebGL work, you will have encountered similar behavior. Back that, face culling, indeed. Exactly. Background. So if you had to flip something around, sometimes it's visible, sometimes it's not, depending on how you configure your engine. Okay, so well, let's do the bit where it actually flips over, because that's more fun. Uh, right, so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is on the host, I'm going to set a perspective value, which you always set in pixels. Perspective, 500 pixels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the container back 250 pixels, and it's going to be kind of become this pivot for us. And I'm going to push the front and the back another 250. And so that when they flip forward, they're going to be at zero. Does that make sense? I, I guess. Yes. Let's yes. find out. Let's do translate, transform, transform. We, we don't have theory corner here. We could just use I like know. a good flipper and just draw. We, have, we do actually have a theory corner, or what do you call it? Theory echo? Theory echo. I see. And that's the German. It's a little bit more. Oh, tell, them what the, tell them what the German is for, uh, for CSS. Uh, Kaskadierende Stilisierungsvorlagen. Oh, it's so <laughs> good. Oh, it's so good. There's right. going to be a pop quiz later, so memorize this. <laughs> it's going to be awkward if you can't say it. I can't say it. Um, right. So I've pushed it back in, in, to, in Z space, or Z space, because we're in the UK. So does Z go into the monitor or out of the monitor? There's negative Z values go in. Oh, so the axis Wait. goes out. Yeah, I can, I can yeah. never memorize yeah, it. Okay. Well, here we are. So it's, at, the, at the moment, it's basically, what was it? It was like 133 pixels, right? And the reason is, if you want to work out how much something's going to get scaled down or up by, it is always the perspective value divided by perspective minus the distance, which was minus 250. This and is literally in the spec, but it's in like, it's like a, a note. Liner. Um, By the way, if you would like to know, this is the math you're always looking for. So, it's like, so now that's why it's like 133, because that's like 66% of the 200, right? So that's why it's that size. So what we'll do, tell you what we'll do, we'll push the front and the back for, uh, back like so. Like so that. we have 80 people in the chat room right now, which is good. Could are be they, more. Are they asking anything? Like, like Rob is almost answering anything, but yeah. So they, they, Bob there Dodd, go Bob Dodd. Shout out to Bob. It means you're, I don't want to say you're redundant, but I'm glad you're here with me now in the chat. <laughs> Shout out to Surma. Yeah, my safety Surma. You see when I go wrong. Um, right, I put the, uh, you might not have seen actually, I put in the extra transform, but it didn't actually do anything. 
like so, it's still at 133, whereas you'd expect it to have gone another 250 pixels back. Well, that's not going to happen. The reason it's not going to happen is this. The flip switch has a perspective value of 500. The container is pushed back by 250 pixels, but then we push something else, another 250 pixels. But the container's in the way between the, the item with perspective on it. So it goes, huh, lol, no. What we have to do is we actually have to ask the container to preserve the parent's perspective and pass it down to the children, which we can do by doing trans form style preserve 3D. And now it'll get smaller. OK, so that now it's basically said, OK, I'll take the parent's perspective, pass it to the children. So now that's all good, isn't it? How are we doing for time? We're doing all right. We're about we are 18 yeah, minutes. In. Easy. Yeah. OK, let's. Uh, so we were doing the thing where the container, what we'll do is we'll flip it. Flipped. So one theme in the questions is right now, like, yeah, is it going to work in Firefox? Is it going to work in Safari? Um, with polyfills, yeah. With polyfills, it probably would work. Right now, we're just, this is, as always, we always say this in our show every time, this is not production-ready code. No. We're just, we're doing this on stage. This is probably going to be horrible. So just, don't, don't just copy it and paste it out, but this is about the technique, and it's going to work in Chrome right away because we're developing Chrome, and you probably can add some polyfills to make it work everywhere this, else. This stuff, if you didn't use the HTML imports, if you didn't use the like, Shadow DOM and all that, you could make this completely work as far back as... Whichever browsers were the last to get 3D transforms. So I guess it should be fine in IE 10, even maybe. Mm, yeah, it should be. I think I don't know. It's, 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 if you want to cry, try to make this work in IE 10. It's yeah. your your homework. Uh, right. So basically, what I've got is I've got the container, and when the container gets a class of flipped, it's going to rotate uh, x 180 degrees because it's in the pivot. So we should see our cards basically go over. Now what we have to do is go back here, and we're going to have to ask for the container. This dot container equals the root dot query selector, and what was it called? It was called container. That's why I can't. People are asking you to zoom in a bit. Zoom in, like this bit? Or why not? Yeah. OK, fine. Uh, also on the website, maybe. Uh, hang on. Although, maybe not. This dot, well, we'll see how we go. Add event listeners. I don't know, listeners. So I, I like I like to do this. I like oh, to the Paul, the Paul trick. I know. I just no. I, no, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to do this. I'm just oh. it's fine. But I'm basically, document add event listener. When you click, I'm going to basically do it this way just so we can check that everything's working. Um, this dot flip. I'm going to flip things over like so. And so I need a function called flip. So you're also giving the element an actual API. I am giving the element an API, and I can just say this dot so nice container dot class list dot toggle flipped, right? Which is going to do nothing. Oh, no, it is. It's, I, I'm an idiot. You don't have the dot in there. You only have it in query selector. There you go. Right, zoom that in a little bit. For now. Now, it's, now the back is upside down, which looks ridiculous. So, and it's not animating, which is also ridiculous. So let's fix both of those. Transition on transform. And we'll do 0.8 seconds. And I do honestly think this is one of the nicer easing out curves. 0.6, 0. 0.31. Oh, that's a new one, though. I know. I don't normally use that, do I? You usually have zero, zero. Now, you see that? See, that's broken, isn't it? That's really broken. Let's fix that as well. Do you know why? It's I, no, I don't. I do, because I've seen this bug before. Um, the front and back, I've got a transform there, but then I override the back with its transform rotate z, 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 rotate y. So I need to put that in there so that it remains. So we have a question. Back. Hang on. Action. Hang on. There you go. See how that's, woo! Um, the only downside is that's actually upside down. Because I suppose if I did that with my hand, my hand ends up upside down. It is physically correct in that sense. Yeah, so let's rotate it in Z. Like, let's rotate it with like that. Through and then whoop, like that, just like that. So 180 degrees. And yeah, look at that, showbiz. Right, what's the question? Uh, you added event listeners in, is co in, in unconnected or if, in something like that? Uh, yeah, so I'd normally have. Uh, so, if, so if you remove the element from the DOM and moved it somewhere else and added it, you would have multiple event listeners, right? I would normally, in a disconnected callback, I would clean up. Remove event listeners. For okay. time. <laughs> Production ready code. Lol. Well, let me know. I'll put that in front. <laughs> um, right. Where were we? Right, so the thing is, when you, when you click on this, that's kind of OK. But let's, let's actually add some buttons, because I did say that we were going to have some buttons, which we'll do in here. So we'll have a button. Speaking of, now that you have basically had experience with both, both v0 and v1 yeah. of custom elements and maybe even Shadow DOM, 
preferences, differences, mm. doesn't really matter. No, a rose by any other name, I think it's still awesome. Um, I really like the fact that it now uses the constructor instead of yeah. created callback. I like that too. Um, and I really, I mean, this is just attached and detached callback by another name, and attribute change callback is still attribute change callback. So for me, mostly, this hasn't really changed. Uh, this one caught me out that you have to, if you're gonna change an attribute, you have to declare as a static. Which array. I guess is a performance optimization. Yeah, it's just like, these are the only ones I care about. And so it's called don't. custom elements define and not Register element. Document. register element. It was before, but I think mostly, it's, you know, it's mostly so it's just fine. syntactic changes. It yeah, seems it's like really quite, all right. It's I'm really quite fine. Uh, right. So we had buttons on the front, right? Yeah, it's got really attractive looking one and one, two, three, four. Okay, let's style up the front button. Let's do that. It's oh dear. Right, front, front button. Right, width. Let's see how much I can do here. Hundred percent. Height. Hundred percent. Oh, let's that see. Seems repetitive. I know, right? Border radius, 50%, because we're going to want that. Outline none, because I'm going to do a hover state in, in itself. I'm going to do font size 60 pixels. Oh, background none, because that it's that gray at the moment. Border, none. Don't want any of that. Yeah, OK, color. La, la, la. Make a white color. There we go. All right, let's do a, a there we go. Someone is suggesting using mix-in for the sizes, which I guess would make sense, but they're you know not what? vanilla. The, you know what? Yeah, absolutely. Not if yet, you're doing anyway. this in production, you totally use some tooling here, wouldn't you? Like, I'm sass, uh, focus. But basically, every single thing we are using, you can see on screen, more or less. But the only thing you can see is the Python web server, and that's about it. So here's what I'm doing. I'm using a box shadow, ooh, which is going to need to be inset. Inset um, with, like, zero on the XY, zero on the blur, these. X, Y, and blur are all zero. And then a 10 pixel spread, which will bring it in 10 pixels, which is kind of cool. And then we'll do a not, 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 not point four. There you go. Why not? And then we get that. Right, that's fine. Now on the back. Ship it. Ship it's done. Perfect. Would you stop it? Trying to save time here. I know, but they're expecting it. Hours worth of content. Um, back. Back. We'll do the back buttons. Oh, I get to do something I quite enjoy on this, I think. 25%, because there's four of them, so we'll make them smaller. Uh, make that a little bit smaller. Someone well. suggested that we should use a transition box shadow. And to that, I think, Ooh. no. No, 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 no. Bad. No, no. If you don't know, yeah. that is what the card flip apps was mostly yeah. about. Yeah, you don't animate box shadow. You don't do that. Never do that it. Will, because um, uh, it will trigger paint uh, on every frame of the animation. And so far, you'll see me stick to transforms, and you'll see me stick to transforms and opacity for that reason. Uh, they are the only, Always. The on, only properties that today uh, will animate uh, in an accelerated version, uh, which basically means that we create layers for them on the GPU, and then uh, we can move them around with the transform, or we can fade them in and out. And that's really, really fast, and that tends to be fast in all browsers. Painting on every frame, it's a gamble. You might get away with it if you've got and a And on fast mobile, machine. you mostly will not. You might not, you probably won't, and I think, you can with a lot of sleight of well, a bit of sleight of hand. Depends on the, the thing. You can get away without. But painting. usually transform opacity, yeah. nothing else. If I was doing have. this differently, I'd probably use a before or an after, and I'd probably do that box shadow on it, and then I just fade it in and out, or I'd scale it or something like. That. There's ways to do it which don't involve paint mostly. Right, where was I? I was doing the background for this, wasn't I? Var. We're going to do like an inverse color thing going on. So on that side, it's like that, and then woo one two three. Oh, inch, oh, let's make that smaller. Four. Okay, now they look ridiculous where they are, don't they? So let's put them in a nicer place. Oh, position absolute. Top, 50%. This is one of my favorite little things as well, is you, when you do that and you've got them, they're all, they are actually in the middle, but it's the top left corner that's in the middle. And sometimes you're like, yeah, but I'd like to just, middle, middle would be good. Um, you can just do a translate, transform, translate, Minus 50%. Mm. Because the, the, the fun fact here is that in this case, translation works on uses for the percentages, the, the size dimensions of the, of the elements are being used and not the parent. So handy. So handy. So good. Um, right, so now let's see. We've got back buttons, but let's position them in a little more, right, nth of type one. I'm just going to assume we've only ever got four boxes because, you know, it's, it's prototype code. So. So one, two, three, three, and four. Right, so button one, button one, here we are, uh, is gonna be staying at minus 50, and we'll bump it up by another 100%. There we are, 
two is going to go out to the side, so that'll be a plus 50 with a minus... Oh, you're going to do like, like a ring around. Yeah, thing. like one, one, two, three, four, like, a, like a compass Like, like a gamepad thing. Yeah. One, Are we going to use the gamepad API? Uh, no, shut up. Um, <laughs> let's find out if that works. Uh, this, I mean, normally you it just... sounds about it, right? Let's find out. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we've got buttons, but I think because these are, they've got a transform here as their default, and then they've got a transform here, we could take advantage of the fact that their parent gets flipped, and so we could just do a nice little animation for them here by doing this, and then let's do, oh, I've got, already got it. Don't repeat yourself, Paul. Grab that. Let's make the button animate. So, oh. now you probably didn't see that. Let's slow so, down. Slow it down. Animations. Great feature of DevTools, by the way. Slow it down. Slow mo. Oh, you can see it. Just, yeah, there's a little spread. It, but let's, you could put a delay or something, or like a curve. Or thanks for know. thanks for sending my thunder. Uh, transition delay. I know some stuff. <laughs> you do know loads of stuff. Uh, 0.1, 0.15. Let's delay the animation, and we'll do it. You know. You know, I think that a bit of a delay. That there we go. So. You see how they spread out at the end? And then we whoosh. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Right, let's do it so that they actually change the value now. When you actually click on one of those buttons, let's actually have it update the, uh, the value on the front. So we can do that with, ooh, let's think about this. Let's do a setter and a getter. Set value. Oh, now you're going fancy. I know, right? It's so good. This dot value woo, equals value. Fair enough except that you've got to make that an underscore, Paul. Get value, return this dot value. And what we can do is we can say this dot front dot query select. This is bad, but I should really be caching this instead of asking for it every time. Dot text content equals well, again. value. And we need to know what front is because we don't currently have it. Equals this dot root dot query select. Huh? Front, 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 there you are. Same for the back, yeah? Because we're probably right, so going to need the back. So just stuff. saving the references we, to we, these two we, elements. We know we're going to need it. Yeah. Right. So what happens is we basically got the front. It's fine. And so what we need to do is we need to say this dot front. When you click anywhere on the front, because the button takes up the whole thing, we'll just flip the thing over. Yeah. This, but we'll delegate to the back in case we do sometime decide that we want more than one button. Uh, and we'll say when you click. And now you're giving me ideas. I know, right? Um, what we'll do is, well, there's, there's going to be a problem with this. We'll do flip, but we'll do this dot mm, value equals whatever the target was. Mm, text content. I'll do it. So we basically. Oh, put, you could at least use like data set or something. Meh. All right. Meh. So if we click on four, there you go. It's actually setting the value. But the problem is, if we click on the back, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Working as intended. Awkward. Good news is, there are the most ridiculously named properties on an event. Um, there's the current target and the target. If you don't know, that's because events bubble. It's just, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> target and current target. Are you the current target? No, I'm the target. How's that different? Don't know. Ask the current target. If the event target is the same as the event dot current target, which basically means Am the I thing that you clicked on, the target, is the current target, which is the thing that was actually so have had you, the event. So basically event. saying, have you, if have you, you have not bubbled. No, yeah, 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 yeah. If you clicked Ooh. on the back itself rather than the button, yeah? Yeah. Then gotcha. we're just going to return. Right? So this is like, if this is, is the back. Bail. Right. So hopefully that will work. So it doesn't do that, but now it does do that. That's that problem solved. Huh. Right. So that's all working. Hi had an idea. Let's make it a little more showbiz. With we a had a question, by the way, or just a note. Are we doing DOM operations in the constructor right now? Because that is apparently not recommended. Uh, other than attaching the shadow. Oh, we do it. Query selector, which. <laughs> sure. I mean, it works, right? <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm yeah. going to walk into some serious Matt trouble. is not going to be now. Hi, Matt. Yeah. Come on, do the thing at Pawn Smith. Okay, Matt. 
<laughs> gonna undermine everything you say. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so let's see. Right, where were we? Oh yes, we, I'm gonna add a ripple. A ripple, ripple, everybody likes a ripple. Ripple! How very material of you. I know. Div class equals ripple. Now, let's add that in. In case you didn't know, by the way, uh, all of our episodes, the, the code that comes out of those is on GitHub. This will also be on GitHub yeah. later on. Uh, it's in the Google Chrome org on GitHub called UI Element Samples, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we probably have a link on screen, hopefully. There's, or, there's dashes, UI dash element dash. True. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, you'll find it. We'll also have it in the description in the video on demand later on. So uh, go there if you want to play around with it yourself, make it work in IE 10 or whatever right. floats your boat. Yeah. Uh, absolute left. 50% top, 50%. This sounds really familiar, doesn't it? Transform, translate. Transalte. Trans 50%, minus 50%. This is going to position the ripple. Whoa. <laughs> you didn't see that? It's fine. it's fine. I expected that because I didn't have the border radius. Now we've got a ripple, and that <laughs> looks, I know, just bear with me, sir. It's actually, it's actually a quite a nice aesthetic, I have to say. <laughs> right, don't get distracted, Paul. Uh, Ripple.expanded, right? Because we want to expand and, uh, and contract. So scale down to zero. I'm going to scale it down to zero. And then I'm going to scale it up to one when we call this class. Now. It's going to go like. Yeah. But we will want to transition on transform. So let's make sure that we've got that in place, because otherwise it'll just pop like that. It's the official sound of popping. Uh, we'll make it a little faster than the, the flip, because ripples, it's got quite a long way to go. So I kind of like it when it just gets on with it. So we'll make it a touch faster than the actual flipping over animation. So we've actually got to tell the, you know, we've got to toggle that class. Well, it's good because we've kind of got that stuff already in place. Uh, ripple, ripple. So actually, interesting question. We haven't seen a single world change in your code so far. Right, give Why it, is that? Give it a moment. Oh, I'm oh, sure yeah. okay. Class list dot toggle. Expanded. Expanded. You also actually haven't proven that it doesn't paint. Right. Um, but that will, that will paint. Let me show you that it will paint. Um, let's, choose, let's choose a different color. Oh, yeah, green is like DevTools uses green to indicate painting, so that's kind of not good. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Now let's do Rebecca purple. I like See, that. I didn't even have to say it. People were asking for this color I, in the chat. What a lovely color, eh? Anyway, look, there you go. Right. So now we do paint flashing. Every time Chrome paints, it will put a green flash on the screen like that. See? Look. Because you're hovering, the border has to be added, and therefore paint is happening. It needs yep. to be painted, like now, literally. Now, during the animation, because it's a, an animation on transforms, Chrome goes, ah, got this. I'm going to give it its own layer, which is a bit like in an art package, right, where you make your own kind of layer, and you do some painting in it. But at the end of the animation, it goes, cool, don't need that layer anymore. Bye bye. And it has to repaint that bit. So you'll see that it goes, Doop. And then at the end, you see that green box around the, the ripple? OK, we don't want it's that. It's basically the flattening yeah. of all the layers back down to one single image, so to speak, on the GPU. So what we can do is we can say to Chrome, and it also works in Safari and Firefox, we can say, listen, uh, that ripple, like if, if you're seeing the ripple, it should have its own layer. So we just do will change, which is the way to do this. You can use the. And there we go. The, we got a will change. Anybody done translate Z0? Before in the histories of ever? Yeah. No, everybody uses will change. Okay. Apparently. Okay. Okay. Um, but if you hadn't, and you've seen translate Z0 or translate Z0, that's exactly what it's doing. Visually in Noah, but it was a hack for Safari, yeah, I think, was, back then. Yeah, back in the day, and then it was yeah. every other browser pretty much since was like, oh, you're putting a 3D transform. That means it should have its own compositor layer. I should do that now. Well, will change is the kind of the standardized version. And so at the end of this, see how we don't see that paint anymore? And if we actually show layer borders, Chrome will show us anything that it thinks has got its own layer with that that's orange. That's actually board. visible. Yeah, you can okay. see that. And that's uh, really good for us here. Um, so this one will have it because of the fact that it's got the perspective on it. So it knows, oh, there's a 3D transform here. Uh, but the ripple gets one because of the fact that we've told it it needs one. What? There, there is a list of properties that basically force our advice for the browser to use their own layer. Yeah. Uh, I think it was in the spec of CSS. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I might link to it in the chat. There's like a list of transform, a list of CSS properties that force an element to its own layer, and from there on in, you can do accelerated animations. Okay, I've set the size of the ripple to one pixel, which seems inadvisable <laughs> because you won't ever see it. However, the thing is, it wants to be the size of the screen, right? We want it to kind of take over, do like a full takeover, which means it's 
Like, do we? We do. OK. And yeah. These change size, right? Windows and that. So we need an, a resize handler to kind of figure out, OK, how big does this ripple need to be, like the radius of this ripple. So I set it to one pixel because you know, I know I'm going to have to figure this out in JavaScript. So what I'll do is I'm going to make an, uh, an on resize, resize like so. And we'll do window.add event listener resize this dot on re oh, Do you know what? That's going to that's gonna fail, but I'll show you why that's going to fail in a little bit. Right, const middle x. Now, I'm going to make the assumption that this is always in the middle of the screen. If we have time, there might be a more generalized version that I can show you. Middle of the, th the screen is the window dot inner width times by 0.5. And the, the y value is the inner height also times by 0.5. Something you could use here if we were really bleeding edge, we could be using the new resize observer. Wow, that is, that is, it, 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 that is a thing. I, I coincidentally just wrote an article about it. I'm posting it in the chat right now. Hashtag personal go, brand. Go read it, maybe. OK. Um, it's basically an observer that only notifies you when a resize happens, and not only on the window, but you can do it on elements. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the event for elements, and it's amazing. Um, I encourage you to use that. But right now, it's only in canary behind a flag. So That's a little bit keen for me today. Yeah. So we need the Pythagorean distance, don't we? We need the, 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 the Oh, we're doing math now. We are from there, from the middle up to the corner, whichever corner was nearest was, because it's in the middle, it's always the, you know, pick one. Um, and so the radius will be the square root of mid x times by mid x, mid x, plus mid y times mid y. And then we can say this dot ripple dot style dot width equals template tray radius times two pixels. Ooh, put a space in, Paul. There's a good lad. Height, also the same thing. That didn't work. Great. Hate it when this doesn't work. OK, fine. Why didn't you work? Oh, it's because I didn't actually call it. <laughs> Awkward. Right, this dot on resize. We'll, do it. we'll just do it here for now. Yay! And also, when I resize it, it breaks. And the reason it breaks is if we were to do console.log this. Ooh. Ah. And we say, I was wondering if so the first, one, yeah, the first one says, oh, yeah, this re refers to the flip switch. But because the second one is window dot add event listener resize, it goes, this is the window, which is no use to me. So we are in the age of ES2015, but even then, sometimes a bind is still necessary. I know. <laughs> I'm so going to bind this. Oh, look at this. I'm going to look this. The Paul Lewis way or the normal way? Mine. Um, let me explain why I'm doing this. That looks horrible. This is basically a feature in every episode. I'm yeah. very proud of it. I'm not so proud of it. It's just necessary. It's going to be in the pop quiz. Okay, Listen all right, up. fine. <sighs> right. The reason I do it like this is because um, I want two things. I want to be able to refer to it by name, because if I do my tidy up, which I promise when I do push this to GitHub, it will have the disconnected callback for stuff filled out. I might even move that to the, this stuff here. Anyway. But the thing is, I want to be able to refer to it by name. So I want to be able to say this dot on resize with my add event listener and my remove event listener. That's one. The second thing is, whenever I call that function, I want this to be always referring to the instance. I do not want it to refer to the window or anything else. So what I do is I take a copy from the prototype, because it's a class. That's exactly where this currently lives, on the prototype. And I'm going to take a copy. I'm going to bind it to this. And then I'm going to shove it as an actual property on the instance itself. So basically overriding it. Basically, yeah. So that, that then always means that no matter what, it will always refer to the flip switch. There okay. is actually in tw years 2017, I think, there's a proposal for a double colon operator. Of course there is. That would be this colon colon on resize, which would achieve the same effect. But it's not there yet, sadly. It's jittering because I'm plugged into a monitor. This, by the way, it, it runs great um, when you don't, you'll see it when you play with it. It's great. Uh, Very coherent. Oof. Yeah, I know. OK, last thing. Um, I feel like we should have shadows. The audience does not seem to care. No, they don't care. <laughs> I'm doing shadows, OK? I will, uh, thank you. <laughs> well done. I, I like you. I like yeah. you very much. Um, OK, let's do a shadow. Shout out to shadows. Shout out to shadows. Shadow, right, I'm going to do like a two pixel one and then, yeah, stick with me. Shadow, two pixels, okay. Um, it's going to be width, oh, this sounds really familiar. Height, 
100%. Background. This is going to be a, a, a black shadow to begin with. And let's see, position, absolute. Top zero, left zero, border radius, 50%. And uh, what a great shadow. I know, right? Looks amazing. It's actually like a record. I know. And um, that's not the only thing I do. I do a great billy as well, if you'd like. There we go. I don't mind. I could do the whole, I, if you ask a question, I might respond <laughs> in my best billy. I don't mind, whatever. Um, anyway, going back to this, which was not Code, really, Paul, code. Oh, focus. Now, the thing is, you remember the container got pushed back 250 pixels. And the, oh. uh, the front and back got pushed back another 250 pixels, and they were half size, which we can confirm. It was 500 pixels minus, oh, sorry, over 500 minus, and then the distance they moved, which was another 500, which is 0.5. So they are half scaled at the moment. Double negatives are too much. I know, but it's true. It's half size. So we could put the shadow inside the container as well, but then when that flips over, the shadow's gonna go a little bit wonky. So let's not bother with that. What we'll do instead is we'll cheat, and we'll do a transform, and we'll scale it down by 0 0.5. Now it's hidden, but it is there, right? <laughs> it's there. But let's translate it down a little bit. Translate Y to oh, pixels. Okay. Yeah, just a couple. So it's peeking out the bottom there. It is. Yeah. But here's what we can do as well. We can also, um, you can make it look blurry by adding a box shadow. But if you get it wrong, let me see, box shadow, no, no, no. Now it's half size, so my two pixel blurry shadow, it's gonna have to be four pixels. And we'll make that black as well. Now, uh, yeah. No, I mean. Oh, you can't see that. Oh, you can't see that. Change the color again? I need, to, I need to blur it, that's why, because I'm an idiot. There you are. Ah. Right. Let me get rid of this. There we go. Oh, it was one right. too many numbers. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah so interesting okay. question. Why not filter blur? <laughs> we we have run into this problem before, I think. Yes. Uh, filter blur. Uh, why wouldn't you use that? Because it's a post-processing effect, which means that when you when the frame gets shipped to the GPU, the GPU goes, uh, "Do I need to blur this?" Yes, I do. And if the animation is if if it's changed at all, if the pixels have changed at all it will go, oh, I need to blur this. And that will happen on every frame. And blurring on every frame is incredibly expensive. So it's like a post-processing effect that you don't want to be running on every frame. It's actually very good if you have you know, some static content that you don't animate. And the deceptive thing is actually that like paint flashing will not show up. No, it won't. It won't because it's, done out, it's not done in the taps rendering pipeline, but outside of it in the post-processing pipeline. So it's really deceptive that you think you have done well in terms of performance, and actually your frames get really slow. Okay, back to the shadow. Uh, if you can see there, there is, there is a shadow, but you can see that it's uh, got the hard edge of the circle and then the shadow kicks in. If you add a bit of a, a spread onto this, it kind of, see how it's now like a blurry shadow? You could uh, zoom in with control and mouse wheel, right? And I don't think I can. No, I don't, because I don't think oh. I've got the things which oh, for the okay. thing with the thing. Again, very articulate. Um, let's put that back where it was, right? Looking good. Okay. What we'll do is we'll add a, another class to this where it goes like flipped. Yeah. And we'll, we will, you know how the, those, uh, the disc, let me just zoom it out a little bit more. The disc goes from like there and it's like big and it, it's like 200 by 200 again. Well, since this was 200 by 200 when it wasn't scaled, we can just get rid of that downscaling. So now it'll be like, oh, like the right size. So now it goes back, to, because if you don't define it, it goes back to scale one implicitly. Yeah, and exactly. that means it will zoom, it will get bigger. Exactly. I guess. And let's transition on transform again so that it moves nicely. So let's do that. And we will have to add that into the JavaScript, won't we? To make sure that it actually gets told what to do. So shadow two pixels. Shadow. How's everybody doing on the chat? I've been forwarding a few questions. We have. 115 people by now in the chat, hey, which is everybody. nice. Can we get to 200? I don't know. Me neither. If only there were like 200 people in the room with us. We have enough people actually in the room, which is scary enough. No. And they're watching. Okay. You type. There you go. And all your okay. typos. So that looks kind of rubbish because the, the animation is, I don't know. The thing is it should flip over as well, Wait, right? Can you show it again? Rotate I X. Well, I'm going to, oh, let me just okay. put that in. There we go. Slow it down. Yeah. Slow I think it it's doing a double flip, isn't it? No. No, it's not. It's not. Now, it's obviously a lot darker than we need a shadow to be. 
So let's fix that by dropping the opacity to zero, ooh, opacity from 0.3, 0.2, 0.3. There you go. Magic numbers, you're good at them. I am, right. Now the thing I know about shadows. I was about to say, don't they get like lighter when you? They do, and they also get blurrier. Ooh. Now, I don't want to change box shadow, like I said, but I know that we could fake it. Take, well, you to make it. Hey, for Monica, yeah, yeah. Minica, I'm calling her now because she was mean to me yesterday. <laughs> because you ruined her day. Yeah, well, she ruined my day yesterday by calling me mean. So, Minica. There you go. <laughs> Hashtag revenge. <laughs> okay, let's add another shadow, which will be exactly the same as the two pixel shadow, but we'll make it blurrier. Error, error. And so it'll be exactly the same as the two pixel shadow, but we will say that it's box shadow. Again, we'll have to double the numbers because it's going to be at half size, 24 pixels. I'm going to give it a, a um, spread of 16 pixels. And when it's flipped over, it's actually going to be the same deal, isn't it? It is. It's going to be the same deal. It's going to do the same transformation, except I think what we want is we want the opacity to be zero here. Oh. And then when it's flipped, we want it. So we want it, we're going to get a crossfade here, all being well. I'm going to make it 0.2. We actually have to animate not just the transform though. Wait, should this be shadow four or two pixels? Because you have shadow. No, I'm I'm stupid. You okay? Yeah, you feel good. I was. No, I'm glad I was my own rubber duck just now. Sometimes saying it out loud, you realize that you're wrong. Hey, it's a great feature. That's why some developers have an actual rubber duck on their desk. And if you have a problem, you have to introduce yourself to the rubber duck and explain your problem, and they will most likely figure out what the problem is. He's my rubber duck. Because that's all I'm good for. You're not just good. You you. So, okay, so now we're not actually seeing what I wanted to see. So see, so you did something wrong. You did, well, I'm, I'm easily confused. Uh, the, yeah, the, yeah, now I've got to set the opacity to zero as that there, I think. Yeah, so the other one is not showing up. And the reason it's not showing up because in the JavaScript, we've not told it to show up. So we need to grab hold of the 12 pixel shadow, like so. How are we doing for time? We have another what? Oh. We're doing fine. Yeah, we're good. We're, we're good. fine. I mean, I, I'm not fine. sure where I want to go with this eventually, but this is like pretty decent, yeah, I don't, guess. Doesn't like that class list of null. Ugh. Where are you? So, oh, I haven't. You Helps didn't. if you put it in the DOM poll. <laughs> there you go. Ah. Can't do anything that, with something that doesn't exist. Look at that. Slow it down. Slow it down. We're totally getting away with it. Like, That's the thing, like, if you slow it down, you'd be like, it could be better, but at 100% speed, you can't yeah, even... You, and if nobody's expecting it, well, the first time you show somebody, and they're like, they're like what have you made? And you're like... Nobody expected <laughs> it. And they're like, do it again. You're like, no, no, I, I don't... At that point, I, there I, will just... I don't, I don't do my tricks a second time. At that point, they will just be clicking the buttons, because it is actually so much fun. It is quite a lot of fun. Um, okay, how are we? We're good. Wow, okay. I'll tell you what we'll do. A couple of things. Let's make it so it's a customizable color. Hey, hey, background. Let's do color equals red. Red. Which so, means, go on, we've got a question. Uh, the question was why don't we determine the state of the shadow and the shadows by the already existing classes and elements instead of introducing new JavaScript? Uh, I think it's possible, but right now we don't want to juggle all of this in our heads or in your head specifically. It's well, shiny enough. There's two things here. It's true. Uh, there are two reasons why. Uh, one is that I didn't want to expose the class that it was uh, open and expanded and whatever else flipped over on the actual element itself. I see. Ideally. Um, so I had to make sure that it was going to be done here at this level. And now you could make a containing element, I suppose, for all of those and then use a single class. I mean, sure. I guess that would work. PRs welcome. Exactly. Yeah. We have gotten a lot of PRs on the repo, actually. I didn't expect on our prototype elements to get PRs, but people no, have people been. people do that. It's great. So you're very welcome to join us on the repo. I linked it in the chat. Uh, Good work, you. Uh, not you. I mean, could you? I know. Yeah, Thank no, you. you did great. Right, so we can set a color attribute and we will, or attribute as some people pronounce it. I've always been an attribute. Are you an attribute or an attribute? Can attribute. You? Attribute. Okay. But then again, I'm not even a native speaker, so what do I know? You know plenty. <laughs> um, so what we'll do is we'll say this.color equals this.getAttribute color. And that means we're going to have to have a setter and a getter, so we'll do set color color. Why not? 
And let's see this dot color oh. equals color. Now, so I'm actually not up to date. Up to date. Uh, we can use color. Wasn't there a movement where it had every custom attribute had to be data dash something? Is this now fine? I don't know. If you know, let me know in the chat because I will actually be like to know that. We seem good. But color actually exists, so it should be fine to use. Right. And I think font color is actually like font tag with color actually exists. This is gonna. I think this is gonna be fine. As long as it's gonna work, yeah. Now the problem is, I put red in here, but I could be like. I can put whatever I want in there. And you know what? We should actually totally handle that situation uh, if we're going to do How this. How do you do that? So, yeah, I was thinking about this, and I was like, do you know, Teach me, Paul. You know who's like really good about you know, checking uh, colors that you give to the browser? The browser's really good at it. So I was like, why don't we do like div? Huh? Huh? And then I can be like div.style.color equals color. And then if the div.style.color is empty because it didn't like it. Oh. Huh? We could do like console.warn and be like. <laughs> color. Not a color. Not a real color. Doofus. Well done. <laughs> Passive aggressive warnings. This is what we call British console logic. <laughs> Well done, <laughs> you. Hmm? Any other great suggestions? Should probably delete. No, I don't <laughs> no, know where it is. It. Keep it. Uh, if the style color is empty or just doesn't like it, otherwise this dot color. And then we can do this dot style set property. Ooh, set property. And then we could do that color that I did before, and then we can do color. Ah, oh, I didn't know about set property. So all being well. Uh, oh, it didn't like it. Hang on, did it warn me? Oh wait, it was. Le I left it as yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not a real that color. It's not a real color. Well done, Paul. Good. All right, let's. It came right back to bite you. It really did. I like that. Oh, there you go. It's red. Oh, it's red. There we go. That worked out just fine for us. And if we don't have anything at all, it's going to. Oh, be we need a default. Gonna say, it's going to say null is not a real color, which again, it's a bit over the top. So what we can do is just say, if there's not a color, I should put it, there. if there's not a color, just, just call it a day. That's fine. And so our default color is going to be the one that is actually in the styles it's, right it's now? The, yeah, it's the Rebecca okay. purple, and then if you set it. Now, I suppose what we could do as well is if you change the attribute, we could just say if the attribute that you change is Don't color. Don't use a switch case. No, nah, you Future proof know. it. Actually, we, no, we'll just, pff, we'll return. We don't, <laughs> Isn't it? What? <laughs> Color equals new value. Now, that will do absolutely nothing. Uh, and the reason is I haven't told it to listen for that. So if I do $0.set attribute color red, it's going to, you'd think that would do something, but because. It, you mentioned uh, it earlier. I did, the attribute change callback. Uh, does rely on this observed attribute. So if we do it's color, yep, yeah, and we do that, damn, we're done. That's worked. All right, how are we doing for time? We got five minutes. So then let's I can a, I can make it work with multiple ones. Ooh, I know, right? I was about to ask about the no, yeah, go on. <laughs> um, because we're doing the the good old flipping thing. So yeah. there's, there's things there in the DOM, but on the screen uh, about the accessibility. Yeah, no, I think if you're going to do something as overblown and ridiculous as this in production, you would want to watch, first of all, Rob Dodson's Inert Polyfill Alley Casts episode, which is brilliant. Get hold of the Inert Polyfill uh, and make sure that as the animation finishes with like a transition end, you'd uh, set whichever side is not uh, visible to Inert, which basically tells the browser, you shouldn't be able to tab into this, it shouldn't show up for screen readers, not because as of right now, you could uh, tap to the four buttons on the back. Right. Even, though they're, even though we can't see them, you can still get to them, which is bad. So uh, expect by the time this goes to GitHub, expect me to have added the um, e inert polyfill. But Rob just do... posted that video in the chat. I wonder why. What a hero. See, look at that. Color equals 1EA326. That's, uh, that's green. Don't know if I mentioned that. <laughs> um, there you go. Now, huh. 
The thing is, so you, the remember, problem, you remember back back when I said that we were going to assume that the uh, the ripple was good? yeah. So that's not that, that's not anymore. working anymore. No. Uh, and also, while I'm here, it's quite annoying because I actually feel like I want to click on the the ripple to get rid of it. So let's just. I didn't notice how how quickly you just added another one because custom elements. That's so good. So good. So good. Right, let's do that, and we'll do if you click on the ripple. So now, if I do that, zip. Now, uh, there are two problems. One is that the, when you click on the green one, the purple one's still visible, which is bad. And secondly, that ripple isn't big enough. So we'll fix both of them, and we'll fix them in turn. And what I'll do, just to make my life a bit easier right now, I'm going to do the flip switch, and I'm going to add a modal class. And I'm going to put a Z index of it on, of one. And then what I'll do is in the JavaScript, I will say, when you do a flip, we'll say this dot class list dot uh, the add modal. My fingers are getting tired. I know, right? All the fast typing. There we go. So that will then zap it over the top of that. Oh, that's pretty. That will zap it over the top of that. But the bad news is they both got the modal class on, which means that we're back to where we were. So now what we need to do is in the add, add event listener, what we can do is we can say this dot container add event listener. Whoa, add event listener. And we'll say on the transition end, transition. Very end. underrated event in my I know, opinion. It's really good. Um, we will say if this dot container dot class list dot contains, which is also incredibly handy, flipped. So if this is the one that's actually at the end of it, so there are two transition ends. One when it flips forward, one when it flips backwards. The one where it flips forward, this class is going to be that's going to be true, that if statement. So we can just return. Other than that, we want to say this dot class list dot remove modal. Because it's gone, it's the one that's when it's gone back. Okay? So we should see all being well. Yes, good, yes, no longer broken. That's good, that's one out of two. Well, that was, that was even though it wasn't broken, it was just I mean, visually was... unpleasing. That's broken. OK. <laughs> right, let's do the other one very quickly. One minute to go. Ah. Um, the thing about this on resize is, is that it assumes that we're in the middle of the screen, which we aren't. So first things first, the problem is we also call it here in the constructor, which is a bad place to be calling it, because by this point, it's not actually been added to the screen. So we, if we call that, if we call the on resize and we're trying to figure out where it is actually on screen, it's not going to work out too well for us. What we want to do is we want to do it in the connected callback when it's added to the DOM in this case. We'll request an animation frame, which basically says, wait a frame until this thing has definitely been added to the screen, to the DOM, all the styles and everything's figured out, everything's up and running. And then call the resize. So that's one thing we're definitely going to want to do. Now, in the resize itself, well, mid X and mid Y are no longer in the middle of the screen. So we'll do const uh, position equals this dot get bounding client rect, which is one of my favorite ever APIs. It's been around forever. And it basically tells you where this thing is on screen. It's width, it's height, it's left, it's top, it's right, it's bottom, it's brilliant. But be careful, it does force. It can do. If you've got pending styles, if you've made a change to your classes or your styles, and then you call it, the browser has to go, hang on a minute, I'm just going to apply all those styles, and then I'm going to run the layout, and then I'll tell you where everything is on screen. So be careful with it. In this ca so case, do all your reads, get all the yep. dimensions, then do all the DOM changes, class changes. Yep. Batch your reads, batch your writes. Exactly. And in this case, I know there's going to be layout post. Uh, a resize anyway, so I can afford to do this certainly here. So we'll do position dot left plus position dot or oh, width. Yeah, that sounds all right. By That'll take us to the middle of the box. And the same is also true for the top and the height. Now, the good news is that will sort of work for this one. Look at that. But it won't work for this one because it's nearer the top left corner than it is the top right corner. And so we actually want to account for it which whichever one's the max. Do you see what I mean? We either kind of go, you're going for the, the, the left corner or the whichever one you're nearer is the wrong one. Go for the other one. So what we can do is we can say, let's have two new variables, because why not? Rx equals math.max mid x or window.inner width minus max. Oh, no, 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 no. Mid x. There we go. Same goes for, for y. Y. Here we are. There we are. Height minus mid y, and then dunk, rx, dunk, ry. Does that all make sense? Hopefully. Maybe. You do the math. There you go. One, two. That looks good. They both work. They're customizable. We've done some showbiz. We're all out of time. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. <laughs>